of my uh, favorite talks about Jewish women. It's from the Kutis Sichis, volume 1, page 139. Mitzvah Tzegyot Tzarik, Achim Shal was the last day of Passover, the year 1938. Hat Chatmuch Admor Geretan the previous Labar Rebbe, excuse me, Shiartaitis tonight, he said the following talk. Let me give the Haftarah from the Shabbos concerning the Haftarah that we're going to read this coming Shabbos of B'Shalach. Er hat dann der Zelt in Nomen von seinen Eltern Zeden, der Zemach Zedek, als sein Zeden, der alte Rebbe, hat am Morgen gefragt, die Kasche. So, the Zemach Zedek said in the name of the alte Rebbe, about a question he had. Favos is the Avtair from Shabbos Shida Davke Va Toshar Devoira Shida from Afroi. Very interesting quick question. We Jewish law dictates that uh, men are the one that read from, from, from the Torah and recite the half Torah. It's not something that we made up, no. It's something that God commanded us. For good reasons, that it's the men that uh, recite all the chanting in the synagogue. So why is it that we uh, read the Haftarah about a song that was composed by a woman? We could have easily chosen uh, songs sung by David. So why do we choose one by a, a woman? Not only that, but the day earlier, the seventh day of Pesach, we actually do say an Avteira recited by King David, a man. Pashat Vashalach is Dadi Shira von Manspilen, but Yashamaisha. In the Parsha itself of Bashalach, we have the famous uh, song of Moses, which was a man. And it wasn't only Moses, it was all the men sang uh, with her. And Ich is Dadi Shira von Freun. And then you have the special song that the, that the Jewish woman sang. It says in the Torah, Miriam grabbed a, a drum. And all the ladies followed her and they had their drums and their cymbals. The whole procession going on, on, going on there with one woman. And this is uh, on, on their own. The way that the Torah commands us that men are uh, have their their stuff going on and w- women have their stuff go- going on separately. Tanlam Miriam, Miriam tells the her gr- group of women, "Let's go, Shiru Lashem Ki Goi Go. Let's sing sing out to God." I'm for us is the Avtora Davke the Shiru from Fenafroi. So back to the question: Why is the Avtora something that the woman spoke? But uh, I'm sure many of you are coming to mind about the big debate about the wo- woman of the wall. Well, this this will give all of us a lot of a lot of uh, cl- clarity. Let's see. Then the Alter Rebbe the Tzedek Langen Super. So this is the uh, Alter Rebbe now gives his uh, answer, his interpretation. Why are we reading uh, Torah from a woman? So the Alter Rebbe tells a story. And this is, uh, you could see the story in that uh, talk given by the previous Rebbe in 1938, the last day of Passover. But after t- telling over this long story, he concluded, And later when the people, the, when the Jewish people came to dry land after crossing through the Red Sea, after they had sang their song, the Jewish woman said their own song of praise. But here's the interesting uh, analysis that the Jews, uh, sorry, the, the Jewish men just sang, sang their song. But when it came to the woman, it said they, they added to it drums and cymbals, mit simcha, which shows that they were really happy and uh, really into it. The far is the Avtera from Shabbos Shira Vatasha Devaira. So this, Alter Rebbe explains, this is why the Avtera, again, that is read by men in the synagogue, is about a song 
by woman, which is uh, Devora. And he gives a whole Kabbalistic interpretation, explanation, that the women are connected with Malchus, kingship, and uh, there's something very special about the uh, attribute of kingship. So now the Rebbe is going to give his um, an analysis. So we mentioned what the Alter Rebbe explains, that uh, we choose the song of a woman because they did it with a lot more happiness. So if you have a choice between something that's just uh, mediocre happiness with Tremendous happiness. We 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 want to cho cho choose the one that's with well, with a lot of joy. But the, the Rebbe takes us further and probes it further. Why is it so that the the woman had more joy than the men? Now the time if so the reason is is bepashas val b'shasman b'kum tazach on haravanya on on tsar when somebody earns something without much effort. Or pain, as the saying goes, no pain, no gain. Can Mishu make him feel the zelba simcha? There's no way in the world that you could feel the same level of happiness when someone actually earns something. Someone really puts himself into it. And you have to put up real wars and struggles. And when you break through, and you overcome, and you prevail, ah, it's such a great simcha, that you can't compare it with someone just showing up. Uh, take, for example, a, a wedding. You have just people showing up, and okay, it's another wedding, let's go and be happy. But then you have the parents. The parents actually brought up the, ch the, the children and uh, got them to, to, the, to this point. That you could imagine that their joy will be much, much greater than the joy of just some guest showing up in his nice suit. So that's the difference between, and this explains why the woman had more happiness than the men when they went out of Egypt. So like this, So when the Jewish people are now leaving Egypt, and they're so glad that they're out of this misery of Egypt. So there's no way that you could compare the joy that Moses and all the men had compared to the the the, or the, the overload of joy that the Jewish woman had. Because the one actually leading all of this uh, celebration and chanting was Miriam. She was actually born at the right at the onset of all of this slavery of the Jewish people. And it was at that time when Miriam was born, where Pharaoh gave this terrible, terrible decree that all born males should be thrown into the Nile River. So true, the Jewish men were enslaved in ter terrible slavery before this decree of throwing Jewish babies into the river. But nothing could, could, could com compare, says the Rebbe, to this terrible, terrible decree of throwing Jewish people, the Jew Jewish uh, babies into the river that's just uh, much much worse than just enslaving a whole nation then it got even worse where Pharaoh actually killed Jewish children and took their blood and bathed in the in the blood so a mother left us out fatter a mother lives through this and bears the pains much more than a f father. So now that all this misery is behind us and the Jewish people are going out from all this misery, so now the happiness from the Jewish woman is going to be much more than the 
than the joy of the woman. Now, what does this have to do with us? What is the message for us today in 2017? Where we're hearing from all sides, woman's rights, woman's rights. We should be equal, equality. Says the Rebbe like, like this. This is a, a lesson to us today. Here the Rebbe analyzes the verse that says they went out call. The Rebbe underlines the word call. All women after her, they were all following Miriam. Miriam was the cheerleader and all women followed her. All the women so the Rebbe says it wasn't just then when they crossed the sea that the Jewish women were following Miriam, but all women of all generations are still following and chanting after uh, Miriam's chant, which says, let's call, call out and praise God. What did Miriam say? That God is... is uh, Elevated, God is uh, much, much higher than us. That God is the ultimate, ultimate of uh, loftiness. Anything else that that is not holy, anything that that wants to counteract. And go against godliness, which is the, it goes into the category of what it says in the verse Sus the horse and its rider, is Ram Vayom that gets casted deep, deep in the sea. Tif Nidrik and Yam Nitzdam Nidrik No Ram Vayom. Here the Torah says it got slammed down. Got a stark and varf and Yam Nidrik was Nidrik and Kenneth Zayin. It went to the utmost of of depth. So this is the chant of all gen generations and this is the women that are chanting that godliness is nothing higher than, than godliness and anything that's opposing godliness gets thrown down like never before. This terrible decree of throwing Jewish children in the Nile River is something that's going on even today in 2017. When a Jewish child is born, was the Yiddish eleven Sederis as Baldvi a kind vert geboren heitman in Gleif angeben at the Tzing von Tero Mitzvis. It is the Jewish tradition that as soon as the child is born, you right away get him into introduce to him Torah and its uh, commandments. So then comes along this evil dictator, Pharaoh, to say the Balabatishkeit in the land. What, what is Pharaoh today? Something that's called Balabatishkeit. Something, how do you translate Balabatishkeit? Something that uh, alien thoughts, thoughts that are ungodly. And this uh, modern day Pharaoh comes and says, As you have a child that's born, so this boy is going to end up growing up and getting married and he's going to have to support his family. So right away you got to throw your child into this Nile of making money. The modern day world, everybody wants to make money, everybody's worried about Having lots of money, the gants, the spies, and pronounced from science given up in the media air. And this is uh, an anecdote to this is the river of Nilus that, that, that was around in the times of the Exodus from Egypt. This was their source because Egypt is a desert, so this was their source. So, just like in modern day today, everything is money. All the advertisements that that, that, that that you see out there, all the all the politics, it's, it's all around money. So in Egypt, it was the Nile River. It's all the and So there there are those voices out there that say, as soon as your child is born, you gotta ready to start start having a plan, make, making a savings account for him, 
start start to uh, worry what what's going to be with his uh, as the all, all all the jokes say uh, that uh, the Jewish mother wants wants the son to be a doctor or a, a lawyer. That's the, this this is the mindset of the of of a lot of people today. I was as I'm a tater mitzvah. So, but what's gonna, so these voices that say, well, you got to make sure your child has earns enough money. But what are you gonna do with his spiritual needs? His Torah and its commandments. Them infant parties for on Sunday school. So once a week, okay, I'll send my child to Sunday school. The Rebbe uses the word movie here. Saturday night, he's got to go to the movies. When in all the yarn over in the free, as if the Elton Vilma Schlafen bis 12 as eager, come Sunday morning, the parents want to sleep in to, till 12 p.m. As a kind of gain a Sunday, okay, fine. You want you to, my my children should go to Sunday school. I don't I don't mind. We're sleep, sleep sleeping in anyways. They're not just gonna jump around there in Sunday school. They're actually gonna learn something. They'll learn some Hebrew. They'll learn some Chumash. They the Elton Valen Ken Ruik Shlafen. They the parents are just gonna take it easy and chill out. But the parents are going to be fast asleep, not just uh, physically, but spiritually as well. Then once they come out of Sunday school, they're going to be exposed to television, movie, and baseball. And and according to these voices, this is what's going to give the child sustenance. Ex expose them to, to television, movies, baseball. So instead of the way it's supposed to be, first and foremost, what you connect a child is, is, is with God. Because, face it, God is the one that sustains the entire world. So if you're worried about your son's uh, parnasa, sustenance, then... Plug, plug him into the source, God. And God is, is, sustains the world with his, with his goodness, with grace, with great mercy. And God does it in a very respectful way, in a very pleasant way. So this is the way it's supposed to be. You plug the child into the source of all this. The source of all sustenance. Nor does where bin sich mit the Rebbe makes it very clear only this and only this, connecting oneself to God, is the ancient This is your only avenue to sustenance. We're talking about physical sustenance. Is when you plug yourself into God. So non-Jews, you could say, okay, they 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 they, they have to go through the. Nilus River is over by Eden State to Atma Dvekim Rasha Malikh and Chaim Kuchamayim. It is on the Jewish people that it says you are connected to God and you are all alive. Okay, we're not uh, God forbid putting putting down non non Jews. They they too are connected to God. We're talking about that the Jewish people have their unique role in this uh, master plan. This is the way God God set it, set it up for the Jewish people to be sustained. They got to plug themselves in with God. And once you're plugged in to, to God and you're alive, that same God gives you sustenance. So instead of the, doing the proper way, some uh, many people just throw, throw their child into this river of uh, falsehood. So you're not just tearing away a child in a spiritual way, but uh, even in a physical way, you're te tearing him away from from life. Because the ever because the river makes it again very clear that. Only single way for a Jew, if Lebanon and Parnassus to have life and sustenance, 
is the connection This is the only way to do it. It's connecting to, to Hashem. So anything other than that, and not connecting to Hashem, you're just uh, simply not going to make any money. As the Rebbe said in a different uh, talk, that a person can make a lot of money, but hey, that same money could go to for doctor bills. So what what would you ra rather have? To have a lot, lots of money, but then spend it on doc doctor bills, or to have a little bit less money, but you're not r running to the doctor e every day. You make the choice. Okay, we will uh, jump a little to the to the to the end. The Rebbe says, don't get uh, intimidated from the voices out there. Don't get intimidated from the modern day Pharaoh. Not for the many different decrees of, of what it says in the news, the statistics and uh, everything that's, that's out there in the news. Don't get intimidated from that. As long as you go with a true... Torah, true Judaism, with the Jewish strongness, time you could be even in modern day America, and doesn't matter who the president is. As Al Dartin Zayn Pari Melech Mitzrayim, you could translate Pharaoh with the current president that that we have. Whichever side you take, it doesn't matter. The Rebbe says not not to get intimidated from everything that's going on. From Desvegen hat es klar nicht zu tun zu seine Kinder. This has nothing to do with your children. Everything that's going out there in the world, if it fear in seine Kinder in der Chatera, as long as you guide your children in the way of Torah, was das ist die Weg, was es bringt sie zum Leben. Again, the Rebbe is making it very clear. This is the only way that's going to give them life, is to uh, guide your children to the way of Torah. Nit nur Leben neil mahaba nur ich Leben. And again, this is actually something that the uh, the Rebbe really uh, bro, uh, stressed this point, and a lot of people think that if if we follow the ways of the Torah and the mitzvahs, okay, so when, once we pass away in the next world, we'll have a good life. The Rebbe says, no, 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 I'm talking about in this world while you're still alive today, you'll have a good life if you follow the ways of Torah. We want children that grow up and say, this is God, I'm going to glorify him. I will exalt God. That the Jewish children should grow up in the same way that the parents grow up in this devotion to God and His Torah. But this is the emissary nachas is kenzayim from kinder. That's the greatest nachas you could have. That your children end up having the same devotion to God as as you, as the parent. Und damals das wie man sagt weiter in in der in der Schier zu wie immer sie waren nach los das meine sich zu wie so mich schlicht mein wie amenu the ultimate is when very very soon tonight when we all merit the rebuilding of the third temple with mashiach noch mehr wie sagt in der lamm mat ich bin schon ich sollte nicht machen und ich habe nicht gewartet ich habe nicht gewartet ich habe nicht gewartet was das ist der beste mit wie sie lamm der sein ich noch im mit wurde gesagt was die mischung hat bis bis sicher the Rebbe quotes from a medrash that says that we don't have to uh, wait until we get to the land of Israel under the rebuilding of the temple, but even while we're still in exile, we, we still have this close connection to God. The last few seconds, the few moments that we have until Mashiach actually comes, if we don't get intimidated, and all the de decrees, even this uh, this new wall that that they're building by the by the Mexican border, you you could uh, interpret it as uh, in, the, in that way if, if you wish. Don't get intimidated from it. If you just keep on trucking, you do your job, educate your children in the ways of Torah. If you do so, is vaosulimigdus God says, I'm going to be with you. As the Ebeshev at the ruin in Yiddish and Heis, God will rest upon every Jewish home. As long as God is resting in your house, God can be comfortable in your house. If God is there, so obviously you'll, you'll have plenty of parnasa. livelihood, you're going to be healthy, you'll be 
totally healthy, nothing to worry about. When Ambus and Nachas from Kinder, you'll have true Nachas from your children. When Kins Kinder, you'll have lots of Nachas from your uh, grandchildren. For many, many years. So this is a uh, 1 plus 2 e equals 3. This is uh, to sum up what, what the Rebbe is saying. You want to have a good life, you want to have good health. This is what everybody wishes today, to be in good health, to have enough money to pay your bills and even more. Very simple. Be dedicated to God and His Torah, educate your children in such a way, and life will be good.